Hey, this is C.B. Smallwood, and welcome to Mental Junk Food, and this is the place where we talk about all things comics, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, pop culture, and everything in between. And today, we're going to be talking about the comments made by Marvel Editor-in-Chief C.B. Cebulski, where he wants to bring back legendary creators from the past for the new uh, Marvel stories that they got going on for their 80th anniversary. So, that's kind of vague, it's very general, but let's go ahead and get into that. Now, uh, a lot of this information comes from bleedingcool.com, and I will try to leave a uh, link in uh, the box down below for you to check that out if you wish. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, basically, it is just as it says. Um, C.B. Sobolski, editor-in-chief at Marvel, he wants to bring back a lot of... Uh, old school talent back to Marvel. But the way I take it, it's pretty much like a one shot uh, type thing. Now, a lot of this information comes from a recent episode of the Word Balloon podcast where they played a recording of a panel that was held at uh, uh, Terrificon uh, featuring Marvel, Marvel Editor-in-Chief C.B. Sobolski as well as two other uh, Marvel writers, uh, Charles Soule and Nick Spencer. Now, during the panel, fans had asked questions about uh, Sobolski, and some really interesting answers came out of that. And one of the topics brought up after, dis after the discussion uh, of the potential uh, return of John Byrne to the X-Men and a definite return of Chris Claremont was bringing back other legendary creators from Marvel's past. And this is what uh, C.B. Sobolski had to say, and I quote, we announced recently that next year is Marvel's 80th anniversary and we have a lot of cool stuff planned. And part of what I really want to do is get a lot of creators who worked on some of those books back from those decades back uh, and, and have really uh, contributing some kind of uh, story to the Marvel mythos again. Uh, the way to drive forward the future we can't forget our past. Those guys really built some of the blocks that we have, that we as editors and creators still stand on. And having them come back and be able to contribute again would be the best way to honor uh, the Marvel anniversary, I feel. Unquote. So, uh, again, it's, it's very vague. But uh, the biggest thing that you can uh, pull from that is... Um, they are going to bring back some old school uh, creators back to Marvel. But most of this stuff sounds like one-time uh, gigs, kind of like a one-off. It reminds me of something that DC Comics did maybe a few years ago where they brought back some of their uh, talent from the 90s and 80s to do these one-issue one-offs on a lot of the books that, that they were known for at the time. Uh, so I kind of feel that Marvel is going to be repeating that type of same idea. But what we can also glean from this article and, and from that podcast, which is called uh, Word Balloon, is that uh, C.B. Sobolski says that basically, or, or it's implied or whatever, that Chris Claremont, he's, he's, going, he's coming back to Marvel to stay. Uh, to stay. So we, we don't know... Uh, if he's going to be working on the X-Men, which one would assume that he would be, and there's so many X-Books, he can pretty much have his pick, so I don't think that would really upset nobody. Um, now, as far as like John uh, Byrne, um, it, in the article it also states that uh, there's been meetings between Marvel Editor-in-Chief C.B. Sobolski and John Byrne, where they've actually met in person, had dinner, and talked about things, but... Uh, you know, for, for whatever reason, uh, John Byrne doesn't really uh, trust Marvel. And so uh, C.B. Sobolski is, is trying to uh, rebuild those bridges between Marvel and John Byrne. So, uh, you know, possibly he may come back, might not, who knows. So th that's pretty much the big news of the day as far as that stuff goes. But here here's what I think about it, you know. I, I think this is really interesting. I think this is a good thing that Marvel's doing. But me personally as a fan, I would like to see more old school uh, Marvel people uh, working at Marvel full time. Uh, especially editors. That, that's one thing that you don't hear mentioned in this article at all. And I know that's never going to happen. I think Marvel's moved past that point. But me as a fan, I find a lot of problems in how some of the things that's going on in the company right now, and I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to be apolitical here. But anyway, 
I feel like if you had more of the classic editors like uh, Tom DeFalco and stuff like that, uh, a lot of stuff would in Marvel would be fixed overnight. Now, sure, you know they've got more uh, old ideas on how to approach things, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The reason I recommend that that they not just look at artists and writers to bring back old art, art, artists and writers to bring back to Marvel, but also to look at editors, is because the editors. Uh, nine times out of ten, were also writers for Marvel. You know, they they started out as writers first, and and, and that sort of thing, and then eventually they, they graduated to editors and stuff like that. So a lot of these guys have a lot of knowledge of of what makes a great story from beginning to middle to end. I think that knowledge needs to be passed on to the next generation. And if you look at the current uh, list of editors at Marvel Comics, you don't see a lot of old school people working in the company and so how can the newer generation of people work at, that work at Marvel get those classic tips and, 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 all, and all that knowledge to tell a good tale and tell a good story. Now sure people can go to college and learn things there and stuff like that but there's certain things that you can't learn at college. There's certain things that you can't learn here or there. There's certain things that you got to learn in-house. You know for example you can uh, go to a, a cul culinary school and, and, and learn how to be a chef or whatever but if you want to learn how to make McDonald's food, the best way to do it is to work at McDonald's and have people that's been there before you teach you how to make McDonald's food. I know that's not the best uh, analogy ever was, but uh, that's the point that I'm trying to get across. And, you know, when you got people like Jim Shooter out there who's not really doing anything, the guy has so much vast knowledge about the business that I feel like Marvel would really benefit from it. And a lot of the new people that, that work as editors or even the writers and, and the artists would benefit from the things that he would have to say about the product. So now moving past the editor's point that I was trying to make, actually talking about the artists and the writers. Yeah, they definitely need artists and writers, old school artists and writers working for Marvel again because uh, I think... Uh, you know, me personally, I'm not a fan of, of a lot of the artwork that I see in, in modern Marvel. Now, they get a lot of flack for their artwork looking one way or another for political reasons and, and that sort of thing. But I want to throw out a new idea. I personally believe that Marvel Comics is trying to emulate Image Comics. Isn't, it, isn't that weird? Isn't that a weird idea? The idea that Marvel Comics is actually trying to emulate Image Comics? That quirky art style that a lot of artists at Image Comics uh, have, it, it's, a, it's a very independent comic book creator art style. It's kind of offbeat, off-center. It's just, you know, it's whatever. And, and, and that's cool. It works really, really well for Image books. And I'm a really big fan of Image. I love a lot of the books that they put out. And, and personally, I think they put, put out some of the best comic books. Uh, and, and a lot of their books are better than... than Marvel and DC. That's my personal opinion, uh, but I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but anyway, and, it, and it's weird, you know, like Image was, was built upon the, the, the 90s style of making comics at Marvel. You know, all the artists that, that went to Image, they came from Marvel. You know, you had uh, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Jim Valentino, Dale Keon, Todd McFarlane, Eric Larson, who else? Wallace Portacio. Sam Keith, oh, just just a whole bunch of other guys, and all these people, you know, work for Marvel, and and most of them use the Marvel method of of telling stories, the Marvel method that's very in your face. It comes from people like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and John Buscema, uh, John Buscema, is that how you pronounce it? And you know, uh, Neil Adams and all this other stuff. Just just very mm, epic looking art style that's very reminiscent of like spaghetti westerns and stuff like that you know think of like a movie like uh, the good and bad and ugly where you got extreme close-ups and distance shots and you got everything in between you know worm's eye view you name it so why this is uh, relevant is that it, i think it's the irony of it all is that these people that left and formed image and now the image of today is nothing like the image from like 20 years ago or how long it's been because image comics today is it has a very very big indie flavor the art styles like there's no two art styles alike and and the, the, the writing is superb at image they got some of the best writers working the business that work at image and 
I just think that uh, it, it's interesting, and, and I think you know Marvel gets a lot of criticism for the art direction and, and the writing direction that they're going with their comics. A lot of people say that it's uh, the social justice warrior stuff, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that because I definitely think that is an element to it. But personally, I think what the reason that Marvel books are not really Marvel books anymore is for three reasons. And I'm going to tell you right now what those three reasons are. Uh, number one, I personally believe that they got a, a, a direction from Mickey Mouse, or you know, you know what I mean, the, the, the people at Disney, told uh the publishing end of marvel like hey we want you to start experimenting like crazy uh do some off the wall stuff we'll we'll throw money at you regardless we want you to come up with like a a wider demographic for for these stories and you know and so just try uh taking already pre-established characters and just kind of twisting them in a different way and and see if seeing if that sticks and if it does we'll put it on the big screen so they did that the fans didn't like it. Now, some people did. Some people did. But I think a lot of fans didn't like it. And I think the sales reflect that for the most part. Um, there was a couple of good stuff that did come out of that. For example, I'm a fan of... Uh, what, what, what is her name? Is it, It's not Miss Marvel. I think it's uh, Marvel Girl. It might be Miss Marvel. Uh, uh, the girl's name is uh, Camilla Khan. She's a, she's a Muslim. And, and I really enjoyed the first six or seven issues of that book. It's very well written. The art was fantastic, and it, it 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 was basically I put it on par with the early issues of Prime, you know Malibu Comics is Prime, and also uh, with uh, with Spider Man's uh, early issues. It was it was that, of that same caliber. Now once the art direction changed, I kind of left the book. But anyway, so there was a few success stories out of that, but for the most part, uh, that experimentation just kind of alienated a lot of hardcore fans, and a lot of people just quit reading the books. The second thing. Uh, 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 why there's a change in direction with the artwork and, and the writing and stuff like that, moving away from the Marvel in-house style that was established by people like Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and stuff like that, is that I really do feel like they're trying to emulate Image Comics because uh, I think they're trying to stay hip and cool, and they see a lot of stuff that Image Comics is doing as hip and cool. And so like, hey, let's do more of this indie flavor and stuff like that. What they don't understand, though, is that Hollywood has finally caught up with what made Marvel awesome for decades. And, you know, kids today and adults that might not have ever read a Marvel comic, you know, they go to the big screen, and what they see uh, on, in the movies with Captain America, Thor, the Avengers, uh, Iron Man, and all this other stuff, is basically what we've been reading for decades at Marvel Comics, you know, from uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, and a little bit in the millennium. You know, and, and people love it. And then when they go to the newsstand and they go to read the, the comics, the, 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 the comics don't even reflect anything that they see in the movies. It's, it's just like, it's just a weird, I don't know if the dichotomy is the right word, but it's just, it's just a weird <laughs> thing there where, where they don't really correlate at all. You know, there's no direct correlation between the two. It's just other than they both share the same names and, the, and, and they look similar. But other than that, the, the way the stories are told entirely different, they are you know whatever the the in your faceness of things is just not there so that's the second reason i really do believe that marvel comics is trying to emulate image and it's stupid because marvel doesn't have to do that see image did uh did that for a while but they kind of realized that you know uh, they were more art than they were writing <laughs> yeah they had it was more mm, visual than it was a substantive you know and then they finally got some good writers over the years, and then and they, and they opened the doors up to try different stories and move beyond the superhero genre, while at the same time not totally abandoning it. And it's awesome for Image for doing that. It works for them. That's where they need to be. But Marvel, Marvel makes superhero comics, okay? And there's a certain formula that they do that works, that's worked great for decades, and there's no reason to change it. You know, it, it, there's an old expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Uh, you don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel. So, anyway, so there's that. Uh, what was the what was the third reason uh, of why? Oh, 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 oh. Now the third reason you've you've heard ad nauseum about you know people being hired at Marvel that identify themselves as social justice warriors or as sympathetic to to that cause, whatever. And so this video is not you know out to bash anyone or uh, that identifies themselves as that as that. But what I am saying though is that they did play a role in, 
you know, how things have changed at Marvel. And, and it's mostly for the worst because a lot of these people were not comic book fans. In my personal opinion, that these people were not comic book fans. You know, they just like, it's like, oh, you know, I'm an intern at Marvel. And so then they go on to become editors and then they hire their friends who are also not even fans of comic books. And so then you end up with this big disaster. So that's one of the reasons that, that I think, you know, if they're going to bring old school people back to Marvel, they need to bring some old school editors to teach these kids. Because uh, that, that's what a lot of them is, just a bunch of kids. They need to teach these kids how to write and draw comics, you know, uh, what makes for a great story. So that's pretty much my thoughts on everything uh that's the three reasons i think that you know marvel is not doing too hot you know i think they got some bad direction from uh disney i think they also uh tried to copy image comics uh and i also think you know that there is a little bit of truth to, to the whole social justice warrior thing you know because you had a bunch of people that basically were not even fans of comics that got internships that became editors and stuff like that and you know they they they're they're basically trying to turn um, a lot of Marvel comic books into like TV sitcoms, and you know maybe that works for you know sitcoms, but what works in sitcoms might not necessarily translate well to a comic book, unless it's Image. It works for Image. So anyway, uh, wrapping up my thoughts, I'm all for uh, Marvel bringing back the old school guys. It is going to be a little disappointing, though, because I know that a lot of these people are just going to leave after they do their one-shot issues. It's pretty cool that Chris Claremont is uh, coming back, but I have to say, though, I don't really expect much, and it's nothing against uh, Chris Claremont. It's just that, you know, I remember his run on Extreme X-Men and, and a couple other books that he did uh, for Marvel there in, in, in the later millennium years, and he's not really written much of anything that's resonated with readers or, or at least not resonated with me in, in more recent times and it seems like some of his best stuff came from when he was uh working with like uh, john byrne on the x-men or when he worked with like uh, alan davis on excalibur and stuff like that and there's been like a whole host of other uh, creators in the past who uh, have rested on their uh, laurels really and, and not really tried to maintain the art styles or, or the writing methods that they used eons ago or whatever or didn't keep pace with the times and so there's like a whole slew of books that's just kind of went in the gutter from from a lot of top tier talent from the 80s and, and, and the 90s you know people like uh frank miller a lot of his newer books that he's been doing here lately haven't been doing too hot uh you got uh what, what is his name neil adams you know, he did a couple of Batman books uh, not too long ago, and I don't think those did too hot. So I think you kind of get the point I'm saying, but I'm not uh, against them bringing back, you know, the old school guys back to Marvel. I'm actually very, very much in favor uh, for it. And I think it'd be a lot better than a lot of stuff that's being put out now, personally. But having said that, you know, I don't have out, hold out much hope uh, for this being anything more than a. Uh, uh, little one-shot nostalgia episodes and and maybe you know throwing chris claremont a bone to write an x book for a little while you know before they eventually you know uh, cancel it after like 20 something issues so that's pretty much my thoughts on everything so uh let me know what you all think in the comment section down below uh, are you excited to see a lot of these uh, old school guys coming back to marvel who you, who do you want to see come back and work at marvel comics full time uh do you like my idea of like bringing back some of the old school editors people like uh tom defalco and, and stuff like that but you get my point you know <laughs> you know a lot of, bring back those old school editors uh also uh, what, what do you think about the idea of uh are you excited about john byrne and chris claremont coming back to uh, comics for marvel what do you think about my three reasons why Marvel Comics isn't doing too hot today with the with the whole directive from Disney, with the whole them trying to be Image Comics, and with uh, a lot of people that don't even like comics that work for Marvel Comics that are in charge of Marvel Comics. So let me know in the comment section down below uh, what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button and please subscribe because I'm trying really, really hard to get to a thousand subscribers. So it would mean a lot to me if you help me get there. As always, this is CB Smallwood and I will see you in the next video.